Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday once again, and you know what that means. Every Tuesday we get to play a game, and we just got to play Wonderwoods, an amazing little game about picking mushrooms in the woods. Each mushroom has a different value, and you don't know what those values are going to be till the end. We put a ton of mental energy into this game, and the result was hilarious. <laughs> we'll talk about all that in just a second here. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Glenn, Ian, and Elizabeth, and before we talk about our game, we're going to talk about how to play the game. Welcome to Wonderwoods. Woods, a game where we're going to be out in the woods collecting mushrooms, hoping that our collection of mushrooms is the most valuable at the end of the game. The mushrooms we're going to be collecting are going to be the porcinis, the chanterelles, the parasol, and the morels, of course. Now, each of those different mushroom types has got a deck of four cards, which represent the four scores it could be worth at the end of the game. So each of them has a one, a three, a five, and a seven. When the game starts, we're going to shuffle each mushroom's deck of four, and we're going to choose one of those hidden cards at random to be its score at the end of the game. So I'm going to tuck that underneath the parasols board here. Once we've hidden all four of the scoring cards for the different mushroom types, the remaining three cards for each mushroom type, still hidden, will become our deck for this game. So everything in this deck represents the scores that these mushrooms are not going to be worth at the end, and that's valuable information for us. At the beginning of the game, we're going to deal out cards to each player, and this is valuable information that we're going to want to keep hidden from our fellow players. This player knows the morels can't be worth 7, they also know that the parasols have to be worth at least 5 or 7, which is huge! Each player also has 5 baskets in their color, as well as 2 out in the middle of the table which they can earn over the course of the game. So each round of this game is played in two phases. The first is going out and harvesting mushrooms, and the second is exchanging information. To harvest mushrooms, we're going to go around the table, starting with the first player, and put our baskets out on mushrooms to collect them. You always have to start with the leftmost column that's currently available, so this orange player could spend exactly one basket to collect one mushroom. Easy enough. And then purple, if they wanted a parasol mushroom as well, would have to spend two baskets using that next column over, and you always have to fill the column to collect the mushrooms. It gets harder to collect as other people have already collected the readily available mushrooms is kind of the idea there. So purple would get their mushroom as well here. We'll keep going around, placing baskets and collecting mushrooms into our little supplies here until nobody has any more plays because they don't have enough baskets to fill any of the available columns. At the end of this phase, once everybody's played their baskets out, we're going to check who has the most baskets played on each of those different mushroom types. So for instance, in the Paracels, purple has got two to orange is one. Purple wins that mushroom for the round, so that means they get one bonus mushroom added to their supply. Orange wins the morels, and then green won in both Porcini and Chanterelles, so they're going to collect one each of those. And that's the end of the harvest phase, which means we're going to move on to the information exchange. At this point, each player is going to look at their hand and decide whether they would like to reveal one of the cards in their hand to all the other players at the table in exchange for getting an extra basket in future rounds. Maybe this player feels like they can give up that morels aren't worth three, that might not be the biggest information in the world to anybody, maybe it would, but if they want to do that, they're going to place that card face down on the table, and once everybody's decided whether or not to reveal this information, we'll flip those cards up and show them to everybody else, and those will remain face up for the rest of the game. Now everybody who did that is going to collect their new basket basket as a reward for sharing some information, and then we'll collect all of our baskets back into our basket supply for the next round and start a new harvest phase. If the supply of mushrooms runs out for a mushroom type, they just can't be earned anymore, so you can't play baskets into that space and earn mushrooms, and as soon as we've emptied two different types of mushrooms, that triggers the end of the game and we're going to play to the end of that harvest phase. Now to conclude the game, we're going to have a big dramatic moment where we reveal each different card under these different mushroom types to see how much they were worth after all, and then we're going to multiply all the times we collected that mushroom in our supply buy the points it's worth and see who scored the most points in the end. All right, let's see what they are. Uh, yeah, now we just away your find the ones, scores, so get rid of all the up. not score cards. Oh my god! The Chanterelles. Oh my god. Ding dong. I had the seven. No! <laughs> is it this seven? is the only one that could be... Oh, oh, the most mushrooms? Oh. No! <laughs> That's actually my favorite. Glenn called it before we played the game. Did you I, just, I just like the fact that... <laughs> There can easily be a, a, a game where all four mushrooms are all all worth one. Oh point. yeah, for sure, for sure. I love that. Yeah, game's like, ridiculous. That's so good. <laughs> all 
All right, so we just finished our game. We played with four people, obviously. Um, four was fascinating. It took us about 25 or 30 minutes to play. I think every time you play this game, it'll take 20 or 30 minutes most of the time. There's not a ton of, you know, uh, intricacy. The gameplay moves by really quickly. Ian's going to take about three minutes per turn because he has to do it right, but then once you're past his turn, you're in good shape. So <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes, you're, you can count on. Math. Um, it plays two all the way up to five players, which is a big range for a simple little game like this, and it's really cool for all those player counts. They got the kind of economy just right as far as how much info each player has around the table, how much info you have to give away to all the other players to get more baskets, stuff like that. Um, so really cool, elegant design for all the way from two all the way up to five players, which I think is amazing. So Wonderwoods has uh, a, t a ton of hidden information, and anytime you have hidden information in a competitive game, it's one that I, I, I really enjoy myself. Um, it forces this interesting, not necessarily bluffing, but table talk that happens where you're going to admit that you have things or admit that you don't have things and then play completely differently than what you're talking about on the table to try and deceive people and trick them into making plays that you think are going to help you, which I did the entire time in this game and it mattered not at all. Um, <laughs> and I thought that I was smart enough to, you know, have other people do things to set myself up for success. Um, but just doing the table talk part of it is something that I really enjoy with these kinds of games. Yeah. And it just, it allows this kind of social interaction while you're using the gameplay to facilitate that in a way that's not necessarily bluffing to win the game or to like a werewolf type game where you're trying to hide yourself or save yourself. It's much more about trying to convince other people to do things to your advantage. Cut it off. End the game, Elizabeth. Cut, cut it off. Game. Yeah, play here, end the game. Why would I do what you tell me to do? I mean, because I fell ahead. <laughs> it's the right move. It's the right move. Cut it off. Uh, so the idea is that we want to try and end it this round. So if you take one. Who's we? And then I take one. Fine. He's right. we. Yes. Don't yes. listen to that guy. I really liked the kind of dichotomy between min-maxing the information that I think I know with the paranoia of watching yeah. other people's plays and trying to deduce what I think they know. So like, it's not a straight up min-maxing game, it's not a straight up paranoia game, it's yeah. like somewhere in between. Yeah, I think that feeling of uneasiness is what makes it so fun to have the conversation while you're playing. It's because you're trying to convince people one way or the other yeah. while you're trying yeah. to make, I said directly, my play matters a bunch right now, um, and they <laughs> never did. They never mattered at all. Like it was yeah, not. It didn't matter. It still was like I still felt that way. I felt like, oh man, everything I do is going to make other people make these other decisions. And mm -hmm. the, again, that hidden information allows you to really play into that like um, dichotomy that Elizabeth was talking about. This matters a lot. Uh, yeah, apparently. Well, because you got to think. So if I do, I'm just going to talk it through. <laughs> We could play this again someday. Nope. <laughs> no. No. And you don't have to make all the right choices right now. It matters a lot to me, like, to be right about it. Yeah, it's got a really good economy of information, but it is this really fascinating give and take for the information. We were talking about right before this how if you start with a really good hand, it feels like, oh man, somebody got a better hand, that's unfair. But the, the trick side to that is all that great information in your hand is information you have to give away if you want to get those extra baskets. And the baskets are an enormous resource. We were constantly one basket short of everything, so that, that draw of you could have one more basket next round is enormous and forces you to start giving out good information onto the table. Well, on the good hand, too, you also have to worry about playing to the I know. I have the one, three, and five of this. I know there were seven, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go here. Oh, my next, I'm gonna go What's here. What's Glenn up like, to yeah, over oh, there? Oh, someone's trying to corner that. Someone knows yep. something. Yep. Yep. Especially if you're sitting there and you have none of that card yep. as well. You're like, all right, yep. they know something. And so we spent a lot of time, each of us spent a lot of time really like deliberating on each of our plays, uh, but you don't have to. Because so much information is hidden, it can also just be a surprise if you have younger players at the table and you get that great reveal at the end and find out you know, who got the majority, who got how many points, how many points is this worth. It can also just be a surprise. Yeah, so I would say like 
the, the actual gameplay is so straightforward that an eight-year-old, like it says on the box and in the rules, could easily take part in this game and be interacting. I think starting to get into the mechanics of looking at your hand and trying to make decisions about which mushrooms are worth more based on what information isn't in your hand and what you haven't seen on the table has that inverse feel to it. There's all these cards present, so I have to bet on the, the last card. I might lean into it actually a tiny bit older for those, like a 9, 10, maybe even 11 year old. Um, but like an 8 year old could certainly take part and could just luck their way into yeah. crushing it. Um, and as a group of adults playing a game that's for ages 8 plus, we had an amazing time with mm -hmm. it. So it is just yeah. good for families, any game group that wants a 30 minute game, like super fantastic. Also, shout out to these wonderful mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, these components are great. They're not just cool looking. They're super easy to tell apart. Mm -hmm. There's there's no confusion as to which mushroom is which. It's just and they just look nifty. It looks like a morel. It looks like a parasol. All right, I think that does it for Wonderwoods. We had an amazing time with this little game, and we hope you had a fun time watching. As always, leave a comment if you got a comment. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see our Tuesday videos every single week when we post them. And hit up our online store. We've got some great games like Wonderwoods and a bunch of other ones. Thank you so much for joining us this week, and we will see you next time.